the head coach of Notre Dame football, who this season, as, he heard, as you just heard, is undefeated after beating my alma mater in week one and now going to the uh, Valhalla known as Yankee Stadium, although well, New Yankee Stadium, to take on none other than Chris Brockman's alma mater, the Syracuse Orange. He is Brian Kelly. How are you, coach? Rich, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on the show. Of course. Come on. You know when it all comes down to it, you know, I like talking to you. Well, we put that Michigan stuff away. Plus, it was early in the season when we played Michigan, so it really doesn't count, right? Well, let me see. Um, I'm looking at the standings. No, it counts. It counts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it counts. It's the only sport, you know, college football, it seems like. I grew up in Boston, right? So it's a sports town, you know, baseball, football, hockey, yep. you know, and head-to-head competition at the end of the year. They go, well, they won the tiebreaker. Um, college football, there's no tiebreaker, I guess, if you play each other. Well, I mean, when it all comes down to it, um, that's it. It's the schedule and head-to-head, and that's why a lot of folks think that if you should stumble over the next two weeks, that it doesn't matter what Michigan does. I mean, do you have that philosophy in your mind here? Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it, it's it's so competitive that um, for us, we've always felt like, you know, you've got to win every week. And so our focus has always been about – taking care of business each and every week. And uh, I I don't know that we've ever had a goal that, hey, if we get one win, maybe we can get in. It's, you know, you're playing for a national championship, Notre Dame. We don't have a conference to play for. So it's it's, uh, win every game you play. Well, to me, I think that's a benefit that you don't have a conference to play for. That's an extra game where where you put it all on the line for what, right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, there's only one – thought process for us and that's to be one of the four teams to get in and I I think you have to always uh, think about you know playing you know each and every game as if it's a a playoff game so uh, I know that's the way our guys feel about playing Syracuse this weekend. Do you feel any necessary uh, um, no I, I know you win you're in I get it but do you still feel necessary to potentially lobby uh the crew that picks these final four? in any way, shape, or form? Uh, No, I don't think so. Um, You know, I think, you know, from our perspective is that, you know, we can't count on every year, you know, what the other teams are going to be like. I mean, we put our schedule together knowing that we want to put together a competitive national schedule every single year. And, you know, if you look at our schedule down the, down the road every year, you know, you, you look at it and go, oh, Florida State, and, you know, you've got Michigan, and you've got USC and Stanford. Uh, that holds up, you know, to uh, the smell test relative to the kind of schedule you're playing. So we can't really worry about that. We've just got to play them as we, as we get them. How is your team any different from uh, other than, obviously, who's your starting quarterback um, than, than that week one where you took on Michigan, Coach? Well, I think the running game, too. Um, Dexter Williams adds a home run punch that we had lacked. Um, you know, at 200 yards rushing last week, he's gone for 200 on a couple of occasions. We did not have him for the first four weeks. So I think those two, and then, then I think, you know, we, we really didn't have any of those playmakers with any maturity. Um, Miles Boykin was a, not a starter for us last year. He's matured chase Claypool, Chris Fink, all of those guys on the offensive side of the ball were not starters for us last year. And they've matured into now. Uh, much more veteran-like in their presence on the offense. So we're going to see Ian Book in, uh, yeah. in Yankee yeah. Stadium? He's healthy? Yeah, yeah, he's practiced the last uh, couple of days, and uh, he'll be ready to go. Okay. What does he bring to your team? Uh, consistency in performance, uh, high percentage thrower of the football, runs the offense very well, um, just very, very efficient in the kind of offense and the style of offense that we want to run. Now, Brandon, we run a, a different style of offense. It's much more predicated on uh, the run game. You know, we ran for over 350 yards against Florida State last week. It's the ability to push the ball down the field vertically. Uh, it's an effective offense, but it's a different style of offense than what Ian Book is in there. Notre Dame Fighting Irish head coach Brian Kelly here on the Rich Eisen Show. What concerns you about Syracuse? Well, they've got a system in place now for over the last three years that they haven't um, changed. And I think Dino Baber's done a great job of sticking with it, hasn't changed it, Um, went through two 
growing pain seasons, if you will, at four and eight and didn't listen to all the noise, stuck with it. And, and now these guys are three years into a system that they really uh, run very, very well. And they're matured. Um, and, you know, the quarterback is fearless. You know, he'll, he'll go out there and make plays for him. Defensively, they've added some veteran players that uh, can get to the pass to the quarterback. They pass rush very well. And um, they're deserving of where they are. It's a good football team. Okay. Let's get to the Yankee Stadium at all. Yeah. I'm just going to come straight through. You just already mentioned you're from New England. Are you a yeah. Red Sox fan going to Yankee Stadium, Brian? I am. I am. But we already got the trophy, so it's really not an issue. Oh, you know, we've already won boy. there. So this is really wow. just a – we're taking wow. kind of a, a victory lap. But uh, you're putting your team in pinstripes, though. I mean, are you good with that? I am. Uh, look, I mean, they're two great franchises. I mean, you have to respect, you know, the work that the, the, the both – franchises have done i mean i'm not calling notre dame a franchise but you know the yankees franchise is iconic uh the tradition of notre dame it matches really well so uh, i think this is a this is going to be a great event yeah the n locks interlocks with the d in the same way that the (laughs) n interlocks with the y for the yankees right (laughs) it's much more than that it's just you know it's a great area for us and our alumni base um and and certainly for for Notre Dame football uh, to to pair up with the Yankee uh, tradition, uh, I just think it's great. Okay, I don't know. I think you're just saying that because you're just you know it's business. <laughs> I understand that because you just I mean you, you had your first chance you had you took a swipe at the Yankees with the Red Sox stuff. No, I was just saying we've already got it, you know, so I don't have to worry about those things. We can go right to tradition. We don't have to worry about. We won while we were at Yankee Stadium and, and clinched the, the pennant. Okay. Um, so uh, did you, are you pushing to maybe play a game at Fenway? What do you we think? We did. Yeah, we did that a couple of years ago um, against Boston, Boston College. Boston College. Enjoyed okay. that. The Green Monster, the whole thing. Uh, just um, it doesn't get any better. When you're independent, you get a chance to do a lot of things. It, it makes it difficult in some areas, but the ability to play. You know, we played Navy out in San Diego Chicago, Northwestern, New York. We go to L.A. We're like a Broadway show. You are. We're opening up in the home near you. You're the you Hamilton. Know? You're the Hamilton of college Hamilton. football. Yeah, it's you, awesome. So, um, you know, look, I, I, I'm uh, not the type of guy that normally tells uh, successful coaches such as yourself how to do your job. But maybe what you should do is take your kids to Monument Park. <laughs> uh, out in uh, in right field there or wherever they've put it now I'm in the New Yankee Stadium. No, it's there. Okay, and you go there and you show off all of the 27 championships that the Yankees have had so that you could see what sustained long success in baseball is like. You understand about what 27 is compared to, what was it, four or five uh, in, in Boston, Coach? Well, four or five in the, in the past. 12, 12, 15 years. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're we're certainly going to take in the tradition of what has been Yankee <laughs> Stadium, but uh, we're going to remind them that this year's you know World Series champs are still in Boston. Okay, very good. Uh, if you could change college football playoff, I know we've kind of discussed it before, but yeah. now that you're sitting there at three, um, one of three undefeated teams, or UCF would raise their hand and say one of four. Right? Do you do you like it? Do you think there should be more? We we had we had Mike Leach on last week. He he oh. went off he went off about a sixty four team idea that he had, <laughs> Coach. Well, you could have a whole show with Mike. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think there's five. You know, there's five Power Five. You know, when we talk about Power Five conferences, it, it just doesn't. For me, the numbers don't seem to add up always, right? If let's let's say that it happens that Georgia wins, right, and and now you've got two SEC schools in, we're going to win out. Notre Dame, that's you know an independent. Uh, there's three. You know, maybe there's only two of the Power Five in the the BCS chamber. That doesn't make much sense to me. That three of the other Power Fives are left out. Um, I think I think sooner or later you're going to want that all of the the power fives get an opportunity to be in this. And to me, I'm not great in math. That's why I got into football coaching. Nice. You would seem to think eight would be the right number, but every time we bring that up, um, we're met with, you know, uh, it's too many and we've already decided on this, but 
I, I just don't see how this can sustain it if, if you're only getting a couple of the Power Five conferences into the BCS championship. Now, it's obvious to me that it would be uh, um, beneficial to a team that has one loss to have a, a conference championship game to perhaps improve their standing and get in by um, slaying a Goliath. Um, you don't have that problem if you're – uh, undefe- if you're undefeated, which is the, the issue for some of these undefeated teams, do you do you see potentially you getting into uh, a conference and joining it and getting giving up your independence at all? You know, it's it's always asked of us, and and I just don't see that that right now becomes a factor for us in terms of um, how how it looks. I mean, you know, the Big Twelve could play themselves out with a conference championship because they both have, you know, losses and and they may end up playing each other again, the same team. So you just, it's so cyclical with the conference championships. It's not a guarantee. So I think if we play a competitive schedule, like we have every single year, if we sit at the end of the year, 12 and 0, and we don't get in, there's nothing that we can do about it. Maybe we'll be like uh, central Florida and we'll put up our own national championship banner. I mean, I, I really think that, where we are, a conference championship or a conference doesn't do us any any better. Coach, really appreciate the time, always. Yeah, Rich, uh, good, I, good talking to you, too. Right back at you. Say hi to all 27 championships <laughs> in Yankee Stadium when you're down there, okay? Would you appreciate it. Talk to you later. All right, take care. That's uh, at Coach Brian Kell. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.